And this is a problem talking about lab skills because there are so many, each one is deserved in its own model. So what I'm going to discuss now is more the questions because we cannot discuss really the, the way of doing it. Uh, so let's discuss the lab skills. So in a way it's a lab management, but what I want to start is actually to make your attention, okay? What comes into your mind when I say lab management? What's inside? Budget, scheduling, equipment, people. what? Mentoring. Mentoring, people. What else? Science. Science, a little bit. I'm not joking, a little bit. What else? Safety, Safety. a very important one. Bureaucracy. Bureaucracy, a lot, yes. What else? Cleaning. What else? Leadership. Maintenance. Okay, we, we already have like so wide area of things, okay? And that's a problem. You essentially expect to do everything. And that's like a key question, okay? So, so why do we need to deal with that? So now we mentioned all this area of things, which in the majority of them we are not even experts. Why do we need to deal with that? Well, you always have a choice. Someone has to do it. <laughs> That's another option, but no one forces you to do it. So it's uh, efficiency, maybe. Let's admit it because we like it, but it doesn't mean that we're not suffering on the way. Okay. So a question is: If I'm an excellent scientist, which I prove, I got the best papers in the world. As a, is it enough? No, but we need to remember that it's not enough. Okay, and that's something as a manager, there's enough. PIs that think this is enough. I'm the best scientist I will be managing. And then they fail, or not maybe, no, the fail is not the right word, but it's, it's going different ways. So we think, we think we are not practicing, we actually have it all the time here and there. Can I learn it? Yes, we can. And then the question, am I ready? How of you think they are ready for management? Raise your hands. Ready in mind, ready that to do more, I will lead this crowd. You see, even the very, very already, let's say, old people here, they're never ready. We're never ready for that stuff, and that's, a, that's, that's an issue, okay? What if I will do a mistake? How are you afraid of that? How much is coming to your mind? How many of you will not be manager or will not be API because they're afraid of being failing on that? Okay, especially the young people. Sometimes, yeah, I'm not good managing. I'm not good leader. I'm not good on, yeah, I'm an excellent scientist, but that's the, the question, but. And then you're not trying, and then that's, that's worse, because yes, you can learn it, so it's, it, why not? And you will do a mistake. We all do mistakes, okay? So here's some of the list that we already discussed, and I especially put it back here. Which, uh, for, so when we talk about management, money spending, hiring and firing a personnel, and firing is as important as hiring. Okay, we're afraid to do that, but this is part of being a manager. Managing time for yourself and the others. Setting projects, which is definitely not easy. Arranging the data, okay? Getting money, getting reputation. We are a marketing unit. We are doing it for us. We're doing it for the students. Getting tenure, is that part of your management? Getting tenure should be part of your set state mind of getting a management. Because if you're not going to get tenure, you're essentially not a manager because you're going to close it. So then what? So it's part of the state of mind. And this is something here. For example, people forget to think about it. Convincing people to work. This is your role, okay? Solve personal problem. The amount of tissue papers that I have in my office, sometimes it's been used by me, crying after they leave, but sometimes it's uh, by them. Getting access to equipment and methodologies, this is your role as the leader. Presenting data in conferences. Publishing, we heard all about that today. Teaching. Yeah, teaching is not my lab. Is it part of the management? Yes, we need to spend time on that. We need to think about that. We need to attract people from there. 
we can use it for our research. So there are different ways. Safety, we heard this is a key, especially when you as a lab manager have the uh, legal responsibility in some cases. <coughs> Solving crisis. Sitting in an office and moving paper. Is that part of a management? Yes, because the problem with sitting in whatever unit which is bigger than us and we do it part of the time. We need to set priorities, setting goal, legal issues, patents, and there's the huge list above that. So this is only what I thought in my office, okay? So can we divide them into subcategories? There is a better, at least suggested way to subdivide it. There is the planning part, which allows the lab manager to know where the lab is going. So I will plan where I want to be. Okay. Organizing, so it determines who does what, which project, techniques, manage the timeline, the budget. So this is really organizing the, the research, okay? For that field, for that aspect. Leading, again, we set the environment and the pace of the lab. This is me leading the lab. It's not necessarily organizing it or planning it, but I keeping everything to go in a general way that I like, the environment around us. And controlling. I can lead, but I also need to control. Okay? I need to evaluate the lab members. Sometimes it's not as nice. I need to evaluate the project. Maybe I need to close it. I need to do hard decision in many cases. Okay? And I need to correct problems when they arise. So I need to also all the time to control what's going on. So we can divide all the big lists that we saw under these parts and really get them set so we understand where and what role in each section we can do. And if you have it somewhere hanged in your lab, you can actually think about this again and again every morning and see what you are missing as a manager, even just these four main categories. So why is it different from a general management? So are you the same manager as to be in the a high tech company? Or I don't know, a, a supermarket? Because this is raising a major question in, in, in academia. Am I a boss or am I a mentor? It's not the same thing. When I hire someone, okay, if I'm hiring a technician, I'm the boss. Because I can fire, there is, I'm essentially paying the stuff. But sometimes as a student, my own responsibility is to be a mentor. Sometimes I cannot fire him, he's not going to be fired. Sometimes there are rules, especially in Europe, they are not allowed to fire him. And then the, the, what, what can you do? Then you're not the boss, because if you cannot fire him, you're not the boss. So the key point here is at the end we are both. In most places, you're mostly the boss. Here you a lot being a mentor. It's always a combination here as a PI. But really being a mentor here in PI is much more because they're doing a new science. You're not raising a lab of technician. With their labs like that. So, am I responsible for everything? You see, I already hear no here and yes over there. I don't know, maybe it's an age difference. I can give you my view. And this is my only view. I'm not responsible for everything. If a PhD is not writing a good thesis, this is not my responsibility. He's doing the PhD, I already did my PhD. I can guide, I can give ideas, I can check, but it's not my responsibility. <laughs> So not everything in the lab is your responsibility. Take it into account. And that's a problem. Someone that takes all the responsibility as a, as a PI or as a manager will be grounded and drowned under one point. Okay? The, 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 it's too much. Feedback I can provide, but I can still not force him to write. The, you know how many PhDs go to the end and never even bother to write their thesis after four or five years? This has happened more than you think. I was sitting on the committee, I saw it. There are people that decided, yeah, we're not writing it. They did the experiment, they even have a one paper, and they decided not to write a thesis. This is happening. What if I fail? What will happen? Again, so the, the question is, what is failing? Do I close the lab? Do I, uh, do I didn't get tenure? I don't know. That's the problem, it's internal feeling. One failure of one person, it's the winning of the other one, come on. We don't know. It's your own decision what is failing. How you know that it was a good idea by you and you get it to the wrong student that is failing and that experience doesn't work? Or 
you had a good idea, and if you would give it to the right person, it actually work. Or well, sometimes you had a bad idea, but they actually have a better idea than you, and they actually did it. This happens as well. I can tell you from my own experience that that's a problem because you don't know. And I had projects that I had a full person doing it for a master, completely failed. We just take it as is, we gave it to another person, it was a huge success. So that's the only way. If you think it's a, maybe a person, you give it to another person to try. If both of them really fast getting exactly the same results and really showing you that it doesn't work, so probably it's the, your hypothesis really not working, then the student. And unfortunately, we need to guess. It's tough to really distinguish. You can say, ah, I will do it myself, which you as a manager don't have time for that, but that doesn't necessarily say that you manage to get it better than your student. And maybe you do going to fail as well, but the third person will actually make it to work. So again, it's, it's sometimes a, that's a science. We're on the front of knowledge. We don't know. And you need to sometimes try it more than one time. Okay? And maybe this year not going to work, but next year will work because something changed. Okay? So then the last question, is it all about science or all about people? Okay? Are we doing science or I'm dealing with people? What actually means science? And that's another big question, and I'm sure it will be a big debate, so I will keep it small here now. Because if you ask me, science is about people, not about extra result. How many of you see other people, and you work with the people, and results are coming from you working with people, not working on an idea? And, and that happens again and again. So yeah, there's also the, the really scientific, uh, hard evidence and things, but the same experiment you can do with a different lab, and it will be successful, or you do with a different lab, and it will be completely failure. And it's all about how you like to communicate with the other person if you sit on a beer, coffee, slash whiskey, I don't know, whatever you define. OK, so five mistakes many beginning PIs make. I didn't invent them. I found them. Some PIs ignore tenure, and this is a key point, uh, talking about young PI. Tenure requirements for several years in order to really set, I want to make the research working. Then I will think about the tenure. Okay? And then they have to scramble at the, same, at the end. A tenure is a process. It needs to be on your management all the time. Okay? It's a long-term planning. It's a long-term initiative. People need to know you. People need to trust you. People need to give you money. That takes time. Networking takes time. Okay, managing people takes time. You cannot get to that at the end. Some PI let the lab assume its own shape and style. You are there sitting in the office and they will do whatever they want. And this is a starting point for chaos. Some PI will assume all people they hire will be motivated and competent. And yet, all of them really want to answer your question. No, you want to answer your question. They want various things. Maybe they want to have a baby in a quiet environment. Maybe they're happy for the salary. Maybe they, they, they're really enjoying to do one repeating experiment, but not all the rest. Who knows? You need to deal with that. You need to find it. Some PIs refuses to intervene into lab conflict. I'm not going to put my head in this fighting of, uh, I don't know. No. You have to deal with the thing when they happen immediately. Okay, if not, you're going to, again, have issues. And some PI don't adapt to the ever-evolving lab. Your lab today is not your lab in two years, and it's not your lab in five years. Okay, so that's something to think about, and all the time controlling it and see where it's going. So, how we motivate people? I know I'm jumping between topics a little bit, but I give you tastes and ideas. Okay, so for complex tasks, we are more motivated by the need of autonomy, mastery, and purpose. So essentially, I need to give a freedom to someone, so he is mastering that part, so he is controlling it, that he knows how to do it, because if not, I will tell him, okay, climb the Everest, but he can't, so it's not helping, and purpose, why he should do it, but he needs also to find it in himself, and that's another key point. So essentially, when we think about challenging against abilities, this is a really starting of a graph. It's always, if you are on that part that you are not challenged, so you're under challenge, you get burnout because it's boring. 
because you do this again and again and a robot could do it and in one point you look on the internet and you're busy going to do something else and your mind is dead. On the other hand, if you over challenge, you don't know what to do. It's just too much, it's too big. I don't know how even to deal and then I don't do anything. So you always, as a manager, need to find a way for your people between that. And don't forget it's evolving. So today they're here, but in a year their ability to do things are much better so you can challenge them more. Okay, so we are climbing. Okay, so this is something to remember. The problem, we're not constantly climbing. This is, was that part. So that's when you hire a PhD or any other student. It's usually here, even as a PI, by the way. You can find it yourself. And then you have this really huge drop down. Okay, and it's amazing. Everyone have it, and I know every student thinks he's alone in this death valley of the middle of the PhD. And as a PI, you're there after you got the tenure and stuff, you start to be there as well, okay? And then there is this point of change, so suddenly something changed. So, so again, the dip is when we realized it's different, we mastered what already can be done in the lab, and now it starts to be the repetitive work of science, and we get to get tired, and it's for all of us, all scientists have like that. And then you get to this dead valley here, which is okay, then there are two options, or you're really going out of it, or you're not, you're really going down here. And that's a big question of how we get out, and the problem is only about you. Only yourself can take yourself out of there. Okay, you need to discuss, you need the people to actually be here and reinvent themselves. Refine what their values are, where they want now new goal to get somewhere. And as a manager, you not necessarily be able to do that. The person needs to fight it himself, you can guide a little bit. But if you're not going to let them be here for a while, they will, they will never grow back. Okay, so you, you have to take it into account when you see people around you. Okay, so how to motivate people? So motivation, this I will do fast. So in the short term, which is motivation, tell people exactly what you want them to do. Not guessing, tell them. Limit the amount of time and the effort you're asking. Don't ask them for two years. Ask them for task of a, a week or a month. Share this, uh, the sacrifice. If you show them that you're also helping, they will do more. Appeal to their emotion. Okay? The pride of managing, a fear of failing. Okay? Belonging to a group that actually managed to do something. The thrill of finding something new. Each one has its own values and its own uh, emotion that talk to him. And each one of us have a different emotion. Give people multiple reasons for doing a, a, what you want them to do. Okay? Inspiration, this is for the more long term. So be the change that you want to inspire. If you are care about the a complete environment, show them that you are recycle your paper, for example. I don't know. Example. You need to find a way that they, they feel inspired by your actions. You need to tell a story to be part of the whole team for the long term. Appeal to their value system. Okay, this is not the emotion, this is a value. What are your core values that you cannot be without it? Each one of us have a different value. You need to trust them and you need to challenge them. So we are there on the progress, not there on the long term of being tired from that. And that's it.